we can start now. Good evening, good morning, everybody. Welcome to this uh, um, next uh, open public lecture uh, of the Master uh, in Orthodox Ecumenical Theology program. And uh, as the whole project uh, of this uh, program is missionary oriented, biblically based and liturgically based, of course, but uh, missiologically oriented, we will have uh, a number of uh, missiological uh, presentations. And the first one will be by Professor. Um, Reverend Professor Christian uh, Sonea, whom um, the other member of the panel, uh, Father Cosmas, John Nyoroge Ngige, will introduce him. Father Cosmas, the floor is yours to introduce uh, Father Christian. Unmute your, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Vasiliadis and uh, the members present. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you all to our today's session, as well as I bring to you my friend and colleague, Father Christian Sonea from the Faculty of uh, Theology in uh, Romania, in the city, from the city of uh, Cruz, where he teaches uh, Missiology and the ecumenical studies. Uh, Father, you're welcome. And we are eager to listen to you. Father has articulated different uh, areas of mission, like uh, common witness. He has also been teaching missiology in his faculty, and he has written a number of articles on the same. Father, please, you're welcome. Thank you, Father Cosmos, for the kind introduction, and thank you. Professor Vasiliadis for the invitation to be part in this panel and also, also I'm very grateful to all that are uh, doing the work uh, in order to make these uh, uh, online webinars and lectures uh, possible. So um, the title of my presentation is uh, Mission as a Common Witness in this, in a, let's say in a dialogue between the Roman Catholic uh, missiology and the Orthodox missiology. So, and the paper of the, the purpose of my lecture is to offer a short review or a short overview of what uh, common Christian witness, witness means and why that. Because uh, the common witness is much discussed ecumenically, it's a, it's a much, much discussed ecumenically theme, and uh, it will. Uh, in my presentation, it will be present, presented from an orthodox perspective. I will analyze uh, some orthodox documents uh, issued by the Holy and Great Council uh, of Crete uh, from 2016, and another document belonging to the Roman Catholic Church uh, called Evangelii Gaudium, issued in 2013. So I will analyze uh, those uh, these two documents, and I will try to evaluate them, uh, having in mind the, the, the topic of witness, and then the topic of common witness, how is uh, this topic presented in both uh, documents. So my presentation will have two parts. The first part will focus on the uh, document issued by the Holy, uh, Holy Synod from Crete. And the second one on the document issued by the Roman Catholic by the by 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 Pope Francis in 2013. So, uh, Christian mission has received a lot of criticism for the way in which the Church chose to present to the world the gospel of Christ. If we objectively analyze the results of the Christian mission from the past centuries. We admit that there are good reasons for such an attitude. Uh, confessional missiology, colonialist behavior, and confessional conflicts uh, transplanted in the new missionary lands, to name just a few, put the Christian mission in a bad light, put it in fact. 
And the, at the same time, we cannot uh, simply ignore the tremendous contribution of the Christian mission to the history of humanity in all spheres of social, cultural, political, and inter intellectual life. That is why a correct evaluation of the effects of Christian mission needs to uh, throw an analysis as well as a clear view of what uh, of, of the way in which Christian communities understand their missionary ethos. So nowadays, uh, lately, we discussed about we discussed about the importance of the term witness instead of the term mission, because witness is something I would say more related with the experience of the people of God and with God. We are the witness of what God did in our life, and we try to, to give witness to that experience to the others in order to attract them to have the same experience, not to convince them, not to convert them. So it's another understanding of doing mission. Therefore, this topic is very important in nowadays missiological discourse. So I will start with my first part of the lecture, uh, talking about the mission of the church within, between Christian witness and common witness according to the Council of Crete. It's important to know for those that are not uh, aware of this fact that between 18th and 27th June 20, uh, 2016, the most autocephalous Orthodox churches met at the Holy and Great Council in Crete after a very long period of preparation. The Council of Crete uh, 2016 adopted six official documents and, and we named them. The mission of the church, the mission of the Orthodox Church in today's world, the Orthodox diaspora, autonomy and the means by which it is proclaimed, the sacrament of, mar of marriage and its impediments the importance of fasting and its uh, observance today, relations of the Orthodox Church with the rest of the Christian world. And it is also formulated a short message and the encyclical of the Holy and Great Council, so the encyclical letter. In our view, the Holy and Great uh, Council of Crete can be called the Council for the Mission of the Church for several reasons. And I will, I will mention here just three. The documents that were adopted to refer to the life of the church today and not to the dogmatic issues. The council did not formulate any new dogmas, but tried to contextualize the teaching of the church, the canonical tradition, the liturgical and spiritual experience to the realities of the contemporary world. The second reason, the encyclical of the council discusses the mission of the church in the world the family as the icon of Christ's uh, love for the church, uh, the work of the church as an answer to the contemporary challenges, the attitude of the church towards globalization, the phenomenon of extreme violence and migration, as well as the dialogue, the dialogue of the church with the rest of the world and with the other Christian communities. The third reason, it adapted uh, a special document on the mission of the church in today's world, which is a premier for the Orthodox synodal tradition and offered a new understanding on mission, placing it into the liturgy after the liturgy paradigm and defining it as a Christian witness. Here is how the encyclical uh, letter defines mission. I quote from uh, the paragraph six, participation in the Holy Eucharist is a source of missionary zeal for the evangelization of the world. By participating in the Holy Eucharist and praying in the sacred synaxis for the oikumene, you are called to be, to, you are called uh, to continue the liturgy after the liturgy and to offer witness concerning the truth of our faith before God and mankind, sharing God's gifts with all humankind in obedience to the explicit commandment of our Lord before his ascension. I quote again from the, from the Acts chapter one, verse eight, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea, Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And 
the second, let's see, the second understanding of mission according to the same encyclical letter. I quote, the life of the Christians is a truthful witness to the renewal in Christ of all things. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And an invitation addressed to all people for personal and free participation in eternal life, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in the love of God the Father, in order to experience the communion of the Holy Spirit in the church. So it's worth mentioning the, here the fact that the liturgy after the liturgy concept was coined by the Archbishop Anastasios Yanulatos of Albania, and it was later developed by and promoted by Father John Bria from Romania, a very famous missiologist. And the understanding of mission as, and as Christian witness was supported besides the two theologians motivated above, by also famous Romanian theologian, Father Dumitrius Staniloaia. So the understanding of, of mission as Christian witness is a concept which is used more frequently in the ecumenical missiology. We can see that in the latest document issued by the World Council of Churches on mission to gather towards life and also by other confessional missiologists. And I mentioned here in my paper, David Bosch from his uh, very famous uh, opera book, uh, Transforming Mission. It is important to mention that the emphasis on mission as a Christian witness was the work of a group of Orthodox missiologists who analyzed the pre council document on mission and noticed that it neglected the contemporary terminology martyria or witness used frequently in the works of what I mentioned before, Anastasius Anulatus and Joe Bria. And this group of missiologists, according to my knowledge, was led by Professor Vasiliadis at least uh, that I read in some, in some uh, yeah, short comments, and I read all those uh, comments published in, in, in a special uh, uh, book. So the group of missiologists suggested introducing the, this notion in the document and even changing the title of the document from the mission of the Orthodox Church in today's world into the witness of the Ch Orthodox Church in today's world. The same group also remarked the absence of any references to the liturgy after the liturgy from the pre-council document. Uh, this being said, the following section is indicated to the way in which the Holy and Great Council of Crete understands Christian witness and common Christian witness. It is perhaps worth uh, added, add, adding that martyria or witness appears in the non-Orthodox missionary documents like uh, the Cape Town commitment. Uh, this is uh, a document issued by the Evangelical Alliance and also I mentioned TTL to, to get towards life and also we'll see in Evangelium Gaudium. Again, I, I will make another comment regarding this uh, uh, term witness or Christian witness. And uh, for the, um, maybe for the students, it's, in, it's important to be mentioned the fact that the encyclical letter was formulated during the Synod, not before the Synod. So, and uh, we have uh, now those terms in the encyclical letters, letter of the council, and probably also as an uh, effect of these, uh, the, the, the comments of the Orthodox missiologist, missiologist group, then, uh, th then insist to, to have this uh, terminology uh, introduced in the Holy and the Great Synod from, from, from Crete. And I think this is a very, uh, very important to know that. So, the theological understanding of mission as Christian witness, according to the, the, to the Council. So according to the documents of the Council of Crete, apostleship and the preaching of the gospel, also known as mission, are part of the very nature of the church, also preserving and observing Christ's commandment. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Matthew 28, verse 19 is the breath of life that the church breath into the human society and transforms the world into the church through the newly established local churches everywhere. Evangelization represents the diachronic mission of the church according to the document on mission from the, from the synod. 
it is important to know that the, the re-evangelization of God's people in, the, in contemporary secularized societies, as well as the evangelization of those who have not yet come to know Christ, is the unceasing duty of the church, according to encyclical letter. Thus, for the Orthodox Church, evangelization and re-evangelization are defined as two different aspects of the same missionary approach. We mention this especially because according to the Catholic theology, Christian mission traditionally concerns only non-Christian nations, according to document Ad Gentes from the Second Vatican Council. While re-evangelization is, is perceived as a pastoral work and, is, and it does not fall into the field of mission. This is one aspect. The second one is important for the, for the countries uh, where the, the Orthodox faith, faith is, let's say, majority, like Romania. When, uh, when we, we will say for a Romanian theologian that we need the revangelization of the Romanian society, it will be very suspect because it's not, it's not that we were evangelized in the beginning of the church. In fact, according to our tradition, uh, the saint... Uh, Apostle, Apostle Andrew is our you know, mis missionary apostle that work in this space. So to use this term re-evangelization, it's a little bit suspect, but the, the Holy and Great Council from Crete somehow give a new understanding of evangelization. In this context, we understand re-evangelization, a type of catechization of our believers or our, let's say, nominal Christians. They are baptized, but they are not aware of their faith now. So they need to be re-evangelized or they, they, they need to be catechized. Taking uh, into account that the rather extended period of time uh, granted for the organization of the Holy and Great Council of Crete, as well uh, the long period in which the document was elaborated, it was mentioned that it contains missionary paradigms which re reflect the entire history of the Orthodox Church in the 20th century and the beginning of 21st century. We can find here the pattern of the Great Commission, the Great Sending, the paradigm of the universal mission with an ex extensive sense, the paradigm of uh, mission focused on the Church, the pattern um, of the mission with an eschatological orientation, the Trinitarian understanding uh, uh, of the Christian witness, the liturgical meaning of mission, pluralistic approaches, and the orientation towards social issues. As far as the reception of the Sino document is concerned, there are voices that consider it to be too theoretical and abstract. I will not, I don't want to enter in that uh, reception process because it's an ongoing process, it's not yet finalized, but yeah, there are voices that appreciate, appreciate the, the fact that we have a, a, a document like this, but there are some also some comments saying that is too theoretical and is not uh, very good to be applied in, in a very contextual situation. Okay, one must not forget that this document initially had another title. The contribution of the, this was the title uh, uh, projected, the contribution of the Orthodox Church to achieving peace, justice, liberty, fraternity, and love among people and to eliminate racial and or other types of discriminations. And the actual form of the document is the result of a process of analysis and theological reflection. Hence, in the document, the mission of the Orthodox Church in today's world, we find the theological basis of the Christian witness in God's will, who wants to save the entire humanity and the entire universe, this divine work is developed uh, and can be found within the church understood as an icon of the kingdom of God. In this context, the liturgical dimension has a fundamental role in the missionary activity. Throughout the participation of the ecclesiastic community in the Eucharist, Christians enter in the world, in the world of an eschatological uh, in the world of an eschatological reality in which they can live their life together with Christ, with all his saints and the rest of humanity in a state of anticipation of the kingdom, kingdom of God. Inspired by this 
uh, first form of experiencing the kingdom, the church cannot remain indifferent to the people's need. That is the very purpose of mission, to give witness about this catalogical experience that takes place within the Eucharistic communion. So this is, let's say, theologically um, foundation, Trinitarian foundation and uh, ec ecclesiological foundation of the Christian witness. And now the documents, not only the document, the, the document on mission, but also the encyclical letter and other documents, uh, somehow um, give uh, the directions of the Christian witness. So, what are those directions? I synthesized here some of them, and I will mention them. The dignity of the human being, according to the documents of the council, one may identify a few directions in which Christian witness can be accomplished. The first one is the witness for the dignity of human being, which is based on a theological ontology of the human being and his destiny, uh, with quotation mark, destiny, deification, according to the Orthodox theology. Those who believe in the inti intimate communion with God are raised <laughs> toward salvation and theosis or deification, both manifested as extensions of the relationship between God and his creation. Based on this, the inter-Christian dialogue and cooperation is extremely important, especially in the effort to defend the value and dignity of human beings, good and peace among people. Having these common values in the Christian witness the, Pacific, uh, the pacifist efforts of all the Christian may gain more credibility and force. In this direction, the, the Orthodox Church can bring her own contribution without uh, resorting uh, to any religious syncretism. So the, the dignity of human being, so or the, the, the direction towards achieving human being or, or pursuing human being. The second direction, martyria as a struggle or uh, as a struggle or pe for peace and social justice. The document also speaks about martyria for peace and social justice. The church, I quote here from the document on mission, the church suffers with all people who in various parts of the world are deprived of the benefits of peace and justice. End of quotation. That the Christian witness is a legitimate work to accomplish peace and social, social justice as well as to eliminate any type of discrimination. The church today faces many challenges, taking into account especially the multidimensional social service, the social conflicts, the economic conditions, and the gap between rich and poor. Then the church has a great responsibility in the struggle against poverty. The document underlines the, pro uh, the profound meaning of serving a neighbor as a very honorable, uh, uh, duty and um, this uh, serving is some has a very uh, spiritual uh, uh, understanding and it concludes stating that it is the mission of all the churches to exhibit solidarity and administer assistance effectively to those in need another direction is the prophetic character of the christian witness christian witness today encounters a consumerist society and, and an, immor, in, in, an immoral and secularized world, the so-called liberal globalization. The church is called to give an, a prophetic witness in this context. So <clears throat> I quote from the document, even, the, even as the church proceeds to preach and realize her salvific mission for the world, she is all the more frequently confronted by expressions of secularism. The Church of Christ in the world is called to express once again and to promote the content of her prophetic witness to the world, grounded on the experience of faith and recalling her true mission throughout the proclamation of the kingdom of God and the cultivation of a sense of unity among her flock. In this way, she opens up a broad field of opportunity since an essential element of her ecclesiology promotes Eucharistic communion and unity within a shattered world, end of quotation. Even though we accept the positive outcomes of the scientific evolution in the life of the contemporary society, we cannot deny the negative consequences of the same outcomes 
and the churches are called to bear common witness in this uh, in this respect regarding the, these consequences. One of them is undoubtedly the ecological crisis. Um, another another uh, direction for uh, witness is uh, Christian witness for the protection of the nuclear or traditional family. Another concern for the Christian witness is the family. The struggle to protect and uh, promote the values of Christian um, family is a very important topic. These days, because of the influences of the neoliberalism that is being religiously promoted in the contemporary world. These are societies, especially in the Western world, in which the nuclear traditional family is not longer considered a preferred family system. They are alternatives to family life and even new understanding of what a married couple means, which forces the Orthodox Church to offer, offer an answer and express a coherent position. In the document about mission, this comes in the form of a pastoral concern for the education of the youth and also as an extension of church pastoral care for the family as an institution. This institution is divinely granted, has uh, 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 always been and must always be founded on the sacred mystery of Christian marriage and it is reconfirmed as a union between men and women as uh, reflecting the union of Christ and his church, according to the document on mission. The last direction is the witness as dialogue or the Christian witness in dialogue, a topic that received special attention in the Council of Crete was the dialogue between the Orthodox Church and the other Christian communities. In this context, the Christian witness is a testimony of dialogue. However, the explicit references regarding the common witness cannot be found in the, in the document on mission, but in order to understand the Orthodox position, we will refer to uh, other uh, two documents of the council. I already mentioned the encyclical letter and the relation of the Orthodox Church with the rest of the Christian world. The last document that at least in Romania creates many debates and yeah, many struggles within the uh, Orthodox community. Understanding mission as a common witness must uh, be ex explained first of all to the relation of the Orthodox Church with the non-Orthodox communities. This is due to the fact, this is due the to, due to the fact that in the Orthodox missiology, church witness is associated with the apostolicity and Catholicity of uh, the church. I quote from uh, the, the, this document on the relation of the Orthodox Church with the other uh, Christian communities. The Orthodox Church is aware that the movement to restore Christian unity is taking on new forms in order to respond to the new circumstances and to address the new challenges in today's world. The continued witness of the Orthodox Church to the divided Christian world on the basis of the apostolic tradition and faith is imperative." End of quotation. Moreover, according to the Council Encyclical, the ecumenical dialogue in itself is a kind of witness, a witness in dialogue, according to Encyclical Letter, paragraph 20. Consequently, in order to have a common witness, we must have an ecumenical dialogue. The inter-Christian dialogue has a vertical dimension in which theological problems are discussed and debated and as well as an horizontal dimension in which moral aspects and social challenges are considered. For the Orthodox Church, the vertical dimension involves the transmission of the apostolic faith to the Holy Scripture and the heritage of the tradition. For now, the churches involved in the communical dialogue do not confess the same apostolic faith, but we can still offer the world a common witness of the love of God in on, on maybe on what is called on horizontal on horizontal level. Now I will go to the second part of my, my presentation, the Christian witness uh, of the Evangelic Evangelii Gaudium. Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel, are the first two words of the first apostolic exhortation of Pope Francis, which was issued 
in November 24, uh, 2013, under the title on the proclamation of the gospel in today's world. It is a substantial text uh, divided in uh, five chapters and 288 uh, paragraphs. The first chapter, the church missionary transformation reminds us that the heart of the gospel is missionary. Faith is a gift from God and since it is a gift, it shouldn't be just kept by one person but transmitted to others. Thus the church is permanently renewed by preaching the gospel and through the growth of her sons and daughters. Similarly, the encyclical of the Holy and Great Synod states that the mission belongs to the core of the church, church identity. The second chapter, amid the crisis of communal commitment, is probably the most controversial se section of the document. Pope Francis calls for a freer approach in commerce, economic justice, a more equitable distribution of wealth in the world. He does not simply condemn capitalism, but says that the theories of economic growth, which claim that the profit on the rich will inevitably help the poor, don't work. This section also addresses the secularization of the cultures, which get farther away from the beauty of the Christian message every day. And at the end of this section, at the end of this section, Pope Francis emphasizes his belief that it would be a benefit for the, for the church to rely more on the knowledge of the faithful women. It is not radical, it is uh, not a radical view, but rather a cont continuation of what Pope uh, John Paul II had started when he talked about the feminine genius. The third chapter, the proclamation of the gospel, represents the very heart of his apostolic exhortation encouraging all Christians to consider themselves apostles called to preach the Christ good news about love and forgiveness. Pope Francis notes that all the various ways in which people live today constitute different uh, callings and the gospel can find roots uh, whenever uh, we are, uh, wherever we are. This uh, conviction shows Pope Francis' faith in the power of Christ and the church to call the people to salvation. Pope Francis <clears throat> is not afraid to, of diversity, but sees in each human culture ample and various opportunities to convert the others to Christianity. The fourth chapter, the social dimension of evangelization, is perhaps the most Catholic section, I mean Catholic, with quotation marks, theological understanding, not confessional understanding. As it uh, speaks about the most universal and inclusivist call to solidarity. At the heart of each community, we should find the inclusion of the poor, the civil peace, the social dialogue, all this contributing to the social harmony. This is the section in which uh, ecumenism and interreligious dialogue are discussed. The fifth and the last chapter is spirit-filled ev evangelizers, approaches a different topic, the, the descendant of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Pope Francis thinks that the courage and boldness given to the sons of God upon this first descent of the Holy Spirit still exists today in the Church of Christ. Just like they, they did then, we are called to receive the Holy Spirit and to give it to those who don't know yet that they too are God's people. The accent lies on the missionary impulse from the opening of the exhortation, as well as on the church that God wants to build with the entire humanity. So the I had here a sub chapter of this second part that I entitled Common Witness in the Evangelii Gaudium. The issue of the common witness the issues of the common witness are treated in the section dedicated to ecumenical dialogue. For Pope Francis, on the one hand, the commitment to ecumenism is an answer to the prayer of the Lord Jesus that may that they may all be one. Uh, John chapter 17, verse 21. In all, on the other hand, the credibility of the Christian message would be 
much greater if Christians could overcome their divisions, like in the, the let's say, the document on ecumenism issued by the, 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 the Synod from Crete. Evangelii Gaudium is Pope uh, Francis' response to the Synod of the Bishops held from the 7th to 28th of October 2012, under the title The New Evangelization for the Transformation of the Christian Faith. The presence of the Patriarch of Constantinople, His Holiness Bartholomew I, and the Archbishop of Canterbury, His Grace Rowan Williams, as guests represented, uh, represented an important uh, Christian witness. So according to the Evangelic Gaudium, the inter-Christian dialogue in itself is a common witness, like in the document issued by the Cedar from Crete. Having in mind the effects of the Christian division as a counter witness, especially in, in Asia and Africa, the search for path to unity be, uh, becomes all more, the more urgent. The procedure for the searching of the unity of all Christians could follow the principle of the hierarchy of truth. So if the if in, in the, the, the document on let's say inter-Christian dialogue issued by the, the Synod from Crete, we have we have this distinction. This is my interpretation of the uh, theological uh, uh, theological level of dialogue and the practical level of dialogue here. It's another principle uh, proposed. This is the principle of hierarchy of truth. There are some is it some hierarchy in, in the truth that are discussed in ecumenical dialogue. So, and there are some truth that are not discussable and probably are other can be not negotiated, but a little bit more flexible in order to have an, a unity at least on the practical level. So the urgency is given by the large number of people who have not received the gospel of Jesus Christ. Consequently, Commitment to a unity which helps them to accept Jesus Christ can no longer be a matter of mere, uh, a mere diplomacy or forced compliance, but rather an indispensable path to evangelization. This uh, imperative is truly revolutionary from an orthodox perspective because the common witness involves here a common evangelization. And I quote, it is not just about being better informed about others, but rather about reaping what the spirit has shown in them, which is also meant to be the gift for us. To give but one example, in the dialogue with our Orthodox brothers and sisters, we Catholics have the opportunity to learn more about the meaning of the Episcopal collegiality and their uh, experience of synodality, end of quotation. So the idea of reaping what the spirit has shown in them is very honorable. But the question still remains, how can this common evangelization be put into practice? Will it, uh, will it be a common trans-confessional evangelization that would not be accepted by the majority of the partners involved in the clinical dialogue? Or will it be a Catholic witness enriched with non-Catholic teachings? This is my, my question. So Evangelio Gaudio, Gaudio talks about the things that unite us and about the things that we can learn from each other. But in my understanding, the common evangelization will be done in the same Catholic way. And so it remains Catholic, but with more, more, let's say in our, in our case, more influence, uh, more, more orthodox influences. Conclusions. One conclusion offer uh, after reading the two documents or the documents from the Orthodox side and the document from issued by the Pope Francis would be that the, the would be that indeed common witness is an imperative and that it is a path to the unity of all Christians. While common evangelization is not possible as long as the ecclesiastic communities do not share the same confession of faith, still we have uh, we, we uh, are left with a common witness on one hand as a way to achieve the visible unity of the church and on the other hand, a way to gain credibility when facing the secularized world. The ecumenical dialogue is in itself an example of Christian witness and it needs to be encouraged, encouraged and developed. Nowadays, we cannot be optimistic about achieving the unity of faith, at least in this moment. But we, we still hope, no? But we, we, but we can still give common witness in other areas, such as moral issues, social challenges, human rights, 
the definition of family or the Christian education. According to the Orthodox theology, the unity of faith as a precondition of the unity of the church has always been extremely important. Orthodox missiology confesses the existence of a single church presented in various ethnic and geographical contexts. Context. That is why Orthodox theology speaks of the universal church as a, let's say, with quotation marks, as a theoretical paradigm, which then is actualized in each local church. From this point of view, each local church is a contextual manifestation of the unique universal church. Since the purpose of this presentation of paper was to show the way in which several ecclesiastical or two ecclesiastical organizations understand, understand the common witness, we look at different type of ecclesiologies and different ways of understanding unity. Thus, we cannot help but wonder to what extent can one speak of unity in Christian confession in the absence of a theological consensus. According to the, the text uh, analyzed abo ab above, I conclude that we can in this speak of a common witness within, however, certain limits. The limits of the canon uh, of the common witness are marked by confessional differences. That is why, unfortunately, we cannot have a common evangelization or a common communion. The Orthodox Church does not practice uh, that does not practice Eucharistic hospitality. It, it here is a discussion. We can have it after the the the. the the conclusion. Still Orthodox theology recognizes the contribution of the other ecclesiastical communities in building a missionary theology, as well as in the development of the contemporary ecumenical dialogue. Besides the theological issues that still separate, separate Christian communities, the documents analyzed above identify social and theological areas in which common witness is possible. So the documents mention the centrality of our savior Jesus Christ and the work of the Holy Spirit in the Christian mission. Thus avoiding the trap of Christomonism, mission, Christomonist missionary theology. As a central missionary deed, the documents speak of the necessity of the re-evangelization of the contemporary society, the fight against social inequalities and for social justice. The documents stress the important of, uh, role played by women in missionary work as well as the importance of the nuclear family in the life of the church. All documents approach in a way or other the moral issues as homosexuality, emphasizing the fact that any abuse or persecution against sexual minorities need to be rejected. Another common theme of, for the Christian witness is the Christian education. Although approaches from different angles in the document on mission, for example, it's seen part of the Christian effort to protect the care for the family. All documents agree that the Christian education of the young generations must occupy a central place in the life of the church. In conclusion, even the Christian, even uh, though Christian mission is limited by certain theological differences, the documents presented prove that the Christian communities can act together in many fundamental aspects of the social life. A common Christian mission understood this way can represent a new approach to the ecumenical dialogue. By building bridges among various Christian communities on practical issues, the ecumenical dialogue could start from, the social, from social issues and then move towards theological issues rather than the other way around. Thank you for attention. I hope it not, was not too long. So I am done with the presentation now. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Father Christian. Uh, I enjoyed very much your presentation. I hope also uh, the listeners of this uh, open public lecture uh, will have the same feeling. And I am glad to hear, first of all, um, that you have praised the two pioneers in the Orthodox, not just external mission, but Orthodox personalities in the common witness, in the common Christian witness, um, at Bishop uh, Anastasios, Yanulatos, from the, let's say the Greek uh, 
uh, Orthodox uh, tradition, theological tradition, and uh, uh, the late uh, Father uh, Ion Brea from the Romanian um, theological tradition. And in this panel now, today we are on from both this, uh, let's say, um, more uh, um, uh, missiologically oriented um, uh, theological traditions. So we have paid tribute to these two personalities who have um, reoriented our Orthodox Church towards a common Christian witness. Now, I will make a few comments, uh, uh, not critical, uh, but uh, rather um, um, additional, in order to um, promote uh, uh, further reflection and discussion. Uh, you have rightly underlined the liturgy after the liturgy dimension of the orthodox understanding of the real mission. And of course, uh, this uh, missiological awareness has been uh, in an ecumenical uh, direction is uh, a very new phenomenon. Previously, we had uh, missions, uh, but uh, rather transferring our metropolitan churches uh, uh, mission to another outside our, uh, let's say, uh, canonical territory, to the outside world, sometimes in opposition to the other confessions. Now we have realized how important this uh, mission, this mission um, for the life of the church, because without uh, the divine mission, the divine witness, we call it Ier Apostoli, holy mission, the church does not exist. It's not a church without this holy mission. However, uh, allow me to think about uh, 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 an element that uh, uh, is uh, um, uh, underlining uh, our, com our um, uh, current uh, discussion. And this is the so-called common prayer. In other words, the liturgy before the liturgy, after the liturgy. Whether it is permissible, first of all, and this has been um, confirmed by the Holy and Great Council and in a way uh, by um, many um, theological documentation that has been have been produced. And uh, the issue is uh, how important praying together being just at the end or just after um, the um, ecumenical, the common um, prayer, uh, the ecumenical common, uh, the week of ecumenical prayer for the unity uh, of the church, and it reminds us. And at the same time, um, we are we are all aware of the reaction against this so-called common, the possibility of having a common prayer to um, ask uh, the divine guidance to um, make uh, further steps towards uh, the ultimate goal of the Eucharistic Union. And originally I thought there were uh, theologically unaware those who reacted and don't want, uh, they don't want to participate. I was proud, I was very glad to hear that uh, uh, the last autocephalo um, um, church uh, um, the, the, in Ukraine, they had celebrated uh, without any problem this kind of common prayer, common ecumenical prayer. And I am sure that this has happened uh, in, um, in many places in, in Romania. In Greece, it is very difficult. Uh, and uh, we are only theologians who participate in uh, initiatives that are taken not by the Orthodox, but by the non-Orthodox minority communities uh, in Greece. So this is still a problem. And uh, always this kind, this time of the year, uh, we listened and hear 
written reports against the Catholics, against uh, um, the Protestants, uh, anyhow reminding how, let's say, not brothers in Christ they are, but uh, uh, some enemies. And I realized that this was done because they realized that uh, in praying together, this may soften the way towards unity and they don't want unity. They want to keep their um, small segment of, uh, let's say, Orthodox uh, Christianity calling all the others um, heretics or uh, non-Christians or whatever. Now, this is the first uh, comment I would like you to uh, ask and make. How can we, um, you mentioned it, you indicated it, but uh, I would like to uh, underline is how this uh, uh, common prayer is part of the common witness. Common prayer to achieve mission first, uh, witness, and then through this uh, common prayer to, um, to smoothen the way towards uh, Eucharistic union. Now, the second um, uh, point I would like to make uh, um, is uh, um, uh, what you have mentioned in both documents, both of the uh, Evangelii Gaudium and uh, in the um, uh, Holy and Great Council's uh, documents that uh, in the common uh, Christian witness, uh, we try to act in a proactive way and not in a reactive way. In other words, to proleptically um, uh, bring uh, uh, on earth uh, what is in heaven. Uh, this kind of um, uh, the ideals, uh, the values uh, of the Christian uh, community. And something uh, more on this, further going further to that, uh, uh, what is not uh, a common, but a parallel witness by the Catholic and the Orthodox. And this is uh, their recent uh, concern uh, about uh, the uh, women deacons uh, in our churches, both the Catholic Church, Pope Francis in particular, and uh, many Christians, Western Orthodox theologians and um, um, primates uh, have spoken openly in favor of the reinstitution of the very traditional and not uh, uh, abolished by a, um, an ecumenical council order of deaconesses. These are my first um, comments just to um, promote the discussion. I don't know whether you would like to respond or we, we would, you would like to ask also Father Cosmas to say something which I left uh, for him, because he is uh, more aware of the so-called uh, importance of taking into consideration the cultural element in our common Christian witness and whether this is done in view of a common witness or just as uh, in view of just an Orthodox witness into, let's say, an African country. Shall we give? also him, or you would like first to make uh, some comments and then uh, um, carry with uh, Father Cosmas later. It's up I, to you. Uh, if Father Cosmas want to say something, so I, I think I spoke 45 minutes, it was enough for, for now, he can say, and then I will, will, I will come with my comments. To both. Okay, okay, Father Cosmas, now you and uh, he will uh, uh, respond again uh, to both of us, and perhaps yeah. also to Nicholas. Thank you, thank you, Professor Fasiriadis, for your comments. Really very provoking comments and reminding us uh, more deep of what the common witness is as well. As uh, Father, you have really 
articulated your paper very well, right? You have taken us right from the beginning to the end of uh, what the orthodox witness in the world today is, and we appreciate your paper. Now, yeah, what uh, 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 Professor Fasiriadis is bringing is very important for us and also for the Americans. Um, the, let's say the orthodox in the new land, orthodox in the new land, uh, how can uh, uh, we witness? Are we doing it as a common witness together with other denominations or are we doing it as orthodox? And this is a big bargain uh, in today's world. And we are being asked these questions. Even uh, for example, in Africa where denominations are going on their own way without considering so much. Father Cosmas, unmute your microphone, please. Okay. To, 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 to comment in your own, in your own uh, understanding uh, as well as coming from uh, a country that is uh, uh, orthodox in terms of a tradition. But uh, as I was there, I saw you also recognize the presence of other Christians. So how do we do uh, or continue with the common witness, not, not necessarily as orthodox, but also reaching out to those who are not necessarily orthodox. Uh, and the more, more you have come to Africa and you have seen uh, the way the worship is being done. Do you think that within the common witness, there is a room for us to consider some of the cultural practices that would enhance common witness in the world today. Bearing in mind that uh, this, this very concept of, uh, of um, you know, considering the new world or the new cultures in a way was left in the missional document in uh, Crete. It was not given as much weight as we, we were waiting uh, to hear. <clears throat> Uh, do you want to answer that or we can open the disc but you can answer what uh, Professor Fasiliadis have said and what I have said, then we can open it up for other participants who would like to contribute. Okay, thank you for the comments and for the challenges for, for both of you, Professor Fasiliadis and Father Cosmas. So I will start with the common prayer and with the week of the unity for the common prayer no we have also i think it is in this uh, in general in each year we have this uh, also present in romania so i will speak now uh, from my 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 context so we are based in transylvania and here in transylvania let's say the ecumenical practice not ecumenism as a uh, phenomenon theological phenomenon is from the centuries because we, live, we are living together, Orthodox, Catholics, then Greek Catholics, Protestants uh, of different uh, colors, let's say Lutherans, uh, uh, Reform, and Unitarians from centuries. So there were not, there were some, you know, uh, moments in the life of a parish, for instance, when the priests and the, the pastors somehow pray together. For funerals, during the funerals, maybe in a marriage, so on, so on. There was there's an unofficial common prayer in the practice of the parishes, in the in the practice in the in the practical life in the in the in the parishes. Yeah. Now this common prayer uh, established at the official level is also very problematic here, not because it's not uh, uh, it's not present. It's, it is present, and we are taking part in that. Uh, week of prayer, not only as theologians, but also as a priest and even as a bishops. As far as I know, I don't know how was this year because of this COVID situation, but there were times then even the, the metropolitan or the, the auxiliary bishop uh, was part in that uh, common prayer with the others. So there are some, you know, maybe you know, yeah, we know for sure the procedure of taking part in this common prayer is not a common liturgy, it's not a intercommunion, but that is a, a decision at the high level and we have to accept it, not to have, it, it's theologically, it's very relevant theologically and it's theologically right. It's not 
is not right. It is not against the canons, in fact. And I forgot the name of, it's a Greek uh, 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 protopresbyteros that wrote a book against the Common Prayer Week, mm -hmm. and he translated in Romania. And even there, even there, he mentioned, I forgot the name. If I would knew that you will ask me uh, this question, I will, I would uh, uh, look for, the, for the, that book and I will uh, 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 mention the name. But even in that book, uh, which is against the common prayer, he said there are special moments in the life of the church where the, the, the communities has to be together. They have to be together. So even they, they are against, they recognize the moments that the, the, uh, the efficient, the efficiency of this moment to the world. If you know, we, you know very well, the prayer is a very subjective, very intimate uh, act. You know, we pray God, so we are intimated in that moment, linked with the, the with God, with the grace of God. So, if in this very humble moment of relation with God, we are still separated, that is a very problematic for us as a church. What can we witness to the to the community? To the, uh, to the world if you are separated even in this very intimate moment with God, because God is, God is the same. So this is not very theologically, let's say, approach, but this is my, my understanding and how the people react. So in, in, city like, in cities like Cluj, where the, this uh, pluralism is present for centuries, I would say it's not a very big problem to have common with common prayer. But in other, in other parts of, of Romania, where the the majority of, uh, if it's a high majority of Orthodox uh, believers, there are some uh, some voices against this common prayer. So, I think we have to encourage it. And be, be, before of, be, before that, we have to explain to people what is the meaning of this common prayer. It's not an let's say syncretism. It's not something that we we are traitors of our faith. We witness our faith, so on, so on. This is very important to have it, but still is a is a challenge. And you mentioned this concept, the liturgy before liturgy and the liturgy after the liturgy. Uh, I know um, uh, also this, uh, this, uh, this formula, liturgy before and liturgy alf, uh, alf, uh, after. So in my understanding, so we have a liturgy before liturgy with the others and have us a liturgy after the liturgy with the others, but we don't have a common liturgy with the others. So somehow it's to avoid the, the common meal, the common uh, Eucharistic meal. Yeah, we you are in preparation for a future common uh, uh, common uh, Eucharistic meal. But still, yeah, I think we yeah we have to to have it. And that is my comment here. Yes, it's a very good example of common witness when we pray together. Then the second comment regarding the the to be reactive and proactive. Yes, I, I fully agree. So when we have this experience. And we express it, and we confess it, we witness it in in society. We are proactive, so we we uh, uh, witness something that we already experienced in, in this, uh, let's say, uh, sacramental life in, from the church. And yeah, the, this parallel witness regarding the the role of the women in the church. I talk a lot with Father Cosmas about the ordination of the women and as deaconesses in the. Alexandrian uh, Patriarchate, and he told me the situation, and he explained me how was that moment. It's there is a decision at the patriarchal, patriarchal level, but unfortunately, it was applied only partially. Let's say, but theologically speak, speaking, in all in both tradition, we recognize at, at least at the theological level that the Deaconesses uh, order was is a traditional one. It's very traditional. It's not something new. And if the pastoral needs will uh, ask, yeah, it can be restored. And also in our, in our tradition, this is the, let's say, official discourse. And there are some steps forward on this, uh, in this uh, uh, aspect. aspect I, I, I mentioned this also in the last, our last uh, uh, meeting with on synodality. According to the, the last status of the Orthodox Church, now in the Parish Council, which is the board of the parish, the female are allowed to be member, to be members. In the previous one, were not allowed; only male were member. Now the females can be part of this 
parish council, which is very important. Also to be part in the bishopric council as a uh, lay participation. So that is at least uh, uh, on the status level, we have also this uh, uh, door open for the participation of the female in the mission of the church. Then uh, the Orthodox in the, in the new lands. Now, this is a, a big challenge for us, I think, as a mission, uh, missiologists. And Father Cosmas uh, visited us, I think, twice in last November and in February 2020, no father, in, or in March 2020. So he saw the presence of different denominations in Romania. So, and I will give you just one example of a common witness in, uh, in Romania. This common witness, I would say is the, not the only successful story of ecumenical dialogue, but probably there are just a few examples and it's, it's good to be mentioned. In 2018, I think, in 2018, we had a very a big challenge from the, from the side of some NGOs, Romanian NGOs, that ask to that ask that the uh, the religious education from the public schools to be put apart, to be put aside, and all the Christian communities, all the uh, religious communities, even the Muslim, the, 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 the Muslims of the Islamic community and also the Jewish community uh, uh, joined and they, they decided to support uh, the, not the faith for the religion of, for the, the religion education, but they supported the, all the communities to ask the, the state to maintain the, the religious studies in the public schools. And there was a big process and the parents had to fill in some application forms in order to have religion uh, studies in the public schools. And all the churches ask their believers and their flocks to fill in that applications for their kids. And the percentage was around 96 or 97 percentage of the people that signed in order to have religious uh, education in public school. There was a common witness of all the Christian communities and all religious communities in Romania in the uh, 21st century. I would say this is a, it's a, a success, successful story or successful collaboration. There were all, also some uh, collaborations that were not very successful like the referendum for the family. It was in 2018, so 2018 and it was unfortunately not a successful uh, initiative, but at least they, we work together with, with the others in order to have this definition of family in the constitution. Then uh, the cultural practices uh, and the, the common witness. So even in Romania, Father Cosmas, we have some cultural practices that are present in more than one uh, Christian community. I will mention the traditional one, for instance, the, the, uh, the Greek Catholic uh, community or the, the Orthodox community, even in the Roman Catholic community, or even in the, let's say, the, the Lutheran communities. There are some cultural practices. So they are more cultural than uh, denominational. Depends, they are related with the, with the nationality or the, with, with the ethnicity. We'll see the same, let's say, the same um, cultural um, behavior for, uh, uh, for, for the Romanians and they, if, if they, if, if, even they belong to different religious communities and they embrace, embrace that cultural, let's say, uh, uh, activities in their religious life. So somehow I think, yeah, um, it's a process of inculturation, let's say trans, the, the, the nominational process of inculturation. The gospel is embraced with uh, the cultural heritage in different, uh, confessional contexts, but yeah, I don't know what to say more in this respect. In your case, is more as yeah, more deeper, and maybe the difference, the, the the cultural differences between the Africans and the Europeans are so different, and yeah, you can observe uh, they, they can be observed there more profound than in in, in Europe or in in the traditional Orthodox countries. Yeah. Okay, thank you for this uh, enlightening um, 
clarifications and uh, for uh, taking uh, the discussion further. Uh, before uh, 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 giving the floor again to Father Cosmas uh, and then later to Professor uh, uh, Dimitriadis, he is not uh, ready yet. Uh, I would like uh, to ask, um, um, I leave uh, two uh, areas for their uh, comments. One is, uh, the care for God's creation as, a, as an, an item of a, an unquestionable common Christian witness. And the second one is the uh, both Catholic and Orthodox affirmation of the importance of the interfaith dialogue for many, for various reasons, one of which is also the environmental uh, uh, concern. But before doing this, I would like to ask uh, uh, to all of us uh, um, uh, a further provocative uh, question. How can the common Christian witness lead at the first level to a common um, cooperation and practice uh, within the local parish level? You mentioned this, and uh, I am very glad to, to hear that uh, what is missing from us Orthodox is that, okay, in the international um, and journey towards uh, the church unity, we are uh, participating and we produce uh, good fruits, uh, uh, make uh, excellent contributions. Martyria, you mentioned, is one of these uh, instead of the so-called mission uh, um, in a very offensive way. Martyria is rather more humble um, uh, kind, kind of uh, uh, missionary efforts. Uh, and uh, at the later level, and how far is this later level, how this common Christian witness can, and how much it can, lead to the ultimate goal of the ecumenical movement, the Eucharistic Union. However, let me allow me to read something and ask you both whether we Orthodox can confess uh, what I am going to read. You have, you know, um, but I don't want at this uh, stage to conceal uh, um, um, or, or to um, present uh, the, the item I'm going to read. Our failure to live in a reconciled unity, uh, living together, is a major obstacle to authenticity and effectiveness in the mission. And further, how can we Orthodox um, affirm what others in the other part of the Christian spectrum can confess. We lament the dividedness and divisiveness of our churches and organizations. We deeply and urgently long for Christians to cultivate a spirit of grace and to be obedient I'm now introducing something on my own, obedient to Christ's command that we may all be one and to send Paul's command to, and I quote, make every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. How can we say not only openly, but in practice also, this kind of um, regret about the still existing uh, gap, dividedness, and divisiveness. I wonder whether we can have uh, um, either uh, uh, Professor 
Dimitriadis or Professor Keramidas. They have returned, but they are not ready. But uh, in the meantime, Father Cosmas, can you also say something more? And then uh, if they will uh, uh, join us, uh, they will uh, also comment. Otherwise, we leave Father Christian to round up the, um, at our today's uh, presentation and uh, close the discussion. Father Cosmas. Th thank you, Professor Vasiliadis, for the opportunity. Uh, let me say that uh, common witness, and especially from our context in Africa, is a day-to-day -day experience uh, because of the nature of our context that is uh, denominationalism. We have so many denominations. But we, we have a, a problem with the Pentecostal movement, who in the beginning, they were very open to the common witness. And even they were provoking the mainstream churches to enter into this common witness, uh, which they thought they are the carriers of witnessing to the world, the true gospel, as they, they call it. But nowadays, they are learning away. They are learning away from this common witness, and they want to do it among themselves. They don't want to mix with, uh, with, our main, with the mainstream churches, like the Orthodox, the Catholics, uh, unless they are called for the national uh, day of prayer, and they will come. Now, regarding to what you have uh, read, I would say that uh, uh, the Orthodox, we need to be more open to the society when it comes to common witness. And uh, my argument or my, my take is mm. there is no way we can uh, uh, claim doing common witness if we are not with others. We can't do common witness to ourselves because we are closed and we are orthodox and we have the tradition. I always think that we should go to the others. And as we do the common witness, then they are able to witness our tradition and learn. Maybe this is influenced by my ecumenical studies as well as coming from Africa where we mix with others and they are very eager to learn about the Orthodox. So when we go to them, they are very much eager to learn about the Orthodox faith. And I think that is, missiologically, we could take that as, as a, a field, as an advantage for us, for the Orthodox to be known, and also let others uh, experience what we experience in our, in the, in our Orthodox faith. But uh, restraining away from uh, uh, being with others, I always find it as a challenge. Uh, and we are not able, even in our best way, for example, to lace issues of common concern at the national level. Our voices, like in Africa, is not heard on, on this on the national issues that are concerning the countries and the continent. It, it, it is like we preserve, we preserve ourselves so much to ourselves, and the rest of the nation is asking, what, the, what is the orthodox faith? What is the orthodox voice on, on this? Sometimes we would hear, for example, the ecumenical patriarch, it would make a declaration on, uh, on uh, environment, for example. But um, how, is that, how is that taken? Uh, uh, it, it, it is taken maybe to mean that is the, for, for, for the patriarchate, for the ecumenical patriarchate. Uh, but if um, the, the patriarchate of Alexandria has not given a common voice on an issue that is affecting Africa, then something even that is happening globally will not be taken seriously because maybe it is not addressing the issues of Africa. So as a, as a, you know, a lecturer and as a priest, I would say, I would like to hear more voices open to the world, the issues in the world from the patriarchate and involve and involve us more because we have experience and we are living the reality uh, that really the church in, uh, and especially in our context in Sub-Saharan Sub Africa is going through. Let me say this as I conclude so that the father can conclude for us. I believe that uh, 
the common witness, the space for common witness is the best for us as a growing orthodox missions in Africa to witness the ghost, to witness that what is orthodox and the truth of the gospel. But if we run away from that common space, then we lose it because others are continuing, they are going on and they are participating within the common, uh, common witness uh, space. Yeah. Thank you, Father Kosmas. You brought also an issue very important, whether in addition to the so-called um, a unanimous voice that is expressed by the ecumenical patriarch that in sometimes we need also the local, regional or um, uh, autocephalous uh, uh, leaders to uh, in, a, in addition uh, express their voice. So this is also something which uh, is very debatable, uh, whether we will have, um, let's say a united uh, voice expressed by the the the, uh, the primus inter pares, or whether each um, uh, local church, local autocephalous church, uh, need to express their um, witness uh, in uh, current issues, local or uh, universal. This is the one. Uh, but before uh, um, doing this, uh, allow me to welcome. Uh, Father, uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Dimitrios Kiaramidas, who for, because of extraordinary um, <clears throat> uh, obligations in uh, Angelicum, was not able to uh, be with us from the beginning. Uh, Professor um, Kiaramidas, can you <clears throat> add something to our discussion? It was a very beautiful uh, uh, exchange we had with uh, the presentation by uh, Father Christian. We don't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm sorry I missed the first part of uh, Christian's uh, presentation. I just followed the last part and the discussion you had, and I am enjoying uh, uh, this exchange of views and also. Professor Vasiliadis, landscape behind you. <laughs> so, my uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, th I think we, we, we are we are we are trying as as Orthodox as Christians to to establish a common Christian witness, but we should first have a common witness, a common Orthodox Christian witness. So, uh, as to what um, Father Cosmas mentioned before, I'm not sure whether the Ecumenical Patriarchate can issue um, universal declarations. We need to have the voice of local churches uh, at the continental or even at the more concrete uh, but, uh, local local level. And an attempt, I think, was made uh, by uh, the uh, metropolis of uh, Cameroon by introducing uh, uh, some women in the uh, uh, as uh, as in the, the diaconate with the mandate to work for, for for mission and i think that a common christian witness a common orthodox christian uh, witness uh, will not be ab uh, achieved if we create parallel orthodox structures here here and where that is this is a contrary to common to common christian witness i am uh, of course, aware that uh, 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 the, there has been a, a lot of ecumenical and missionary experience that has been given by missionaries who worked in Africa or elsewhere. And perhaps uh, we are near to the time that Africa, America, Asia will offer something to us. It is something that we discussed last, last fri Friday speaking uh, about about synodality, what we give, what we offer, what we um, receive uh, from the others. So this is a, an exchange, uh, an exchange pro process. But a common Christian witness should be experienced and live at the local level first, and then be transmitted to the universal church uh, as a whole. As an Orthodox, I am uh, uh, aware of the fact that. Uh, we still have to do a lot 
with the, with the other Christian uh, churches, uh, churches and learn from the others and from their missionary ex experience. But uh, I, I will be happy, would be happy if we could first construct together a common Orthodox uh, missionary witness yes. because missionary mission is something that unites what's divided. It does not divide what is, what is uh, united, especially the second or third generation of, uh, of Christians joining the Orthodox Church will be more uh, aware of their proper identity, of their proper voice, of their proper uh, problems and, and the challenges uh, that will enrich the Orthodox Church as a whole, as the diaspora does uh, the last uh, half century or, or more if we see what the American Orthodox diaspora has has brought to the to the church universal. So that was my my, my short uh, comment and I will uh, congratulate Father Christian for his presentation and Father Cosmas for his concerns and and uh, ref, ref, reflection that reflection that should be received by all local Orthodox churches together. Uh, thank you. Since we have uh, uh, nearly covered the one and a half hour uh, been allowed to us, I don't know whether uh, we will be cut off uh, without our willingness. So quickly, uh, Father Christian, five, uh, one minute uh, round out uh, uh, today's uh, uh, discussion and uh, perhaps we will be in time before uh, the uh, we'll be disconnected. Uh, just one comment. And so the ex historical experience uh, showed us that we are able to, to have a common witness, at least in our context, when the external challenges are in front of us. For instance, the communist, the, the communist regime in Romania, we, we, we had what was called the ecumenism of suffering. And in that context, the churches learn to live together and to give a common witness in that context as much as they could, they, they can. Even with this uh, challenge from the uh, secular NGO now. So this is the idea you have now how somehow we have to learn to repent ourselves. This is the proactive attitude to learn from the, from the past and to anticipate the future and to learn to, to have a common witness because we, know, we don't need a challenge from outside to force us, to force us to be together, to have a one voice. We have to do it by ourselves. This is, let's say, by default, we have to have a common witness, not by, you know, uh, uh, challenge by outside. This is my last comment. And yeah, there are many to say on this respect, but this is the, yeah. And thank you for the, for the uh, presence and uh, thank you all of you. Uh, Professor Vasiliadis, Father Cosmas, Dimitrios Keramidas, and yeah, all of you. And yeah, it, it was a pleasure to be with you. And yeah, I'm humbled that you invited me for this. Uh... We thank you. And we thank our listeners, those who participated uh, from the YouTube uh, and uh, the others. Uh, Professor Dimitriadis, the last word is yours before we are off. <laughs> yeah, the thing is that, uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Father Christian and, of, of course, also Father Cosmas from Kenya, Professor Gramidas, and, and you. Uh, it was, it was uh, very fruitful for me as well, since um, I, I uh, consider myself a missiologist because of my PhD was based on a mission. I, rem I remember that uh, Father, John, Father Cosmas, actually, John, uh, then were studying together for... Uh, uh, or the same thing. Um, yes, very fruitful. Common Christian witness a new question is a new question of uh, mission uh, nowadays. And um, I don't think I have anything to add. Actually, I, I was dealing to be honest with you the fact that we, because Greece is freezing right now, and the water tubes outside the house are also uh, freezing. Trying to find some solutions. Uh, hopefully. The, uh, the synodal, the conciliary, all the thing, all, and the dialogue between uh, Catholics and Orthodox would be easier than my uh, effort dealing with, uh, with the water. And uh, yeah, 
Uh, we're going to meet our uh, next appointment will be next Friday, if I'm not mistaken, right? And we will have also uh, Catholics and uh, Greek Catholics, uh, I mean, a little, yeah. bit, uh, mm-hmm. a little bit enlarging our company in uh, the, this next uh, presentation. Thank you. Uh, exactly. Father Christian, thank you, Father Cosmas, um, and all the others, Professor Dimitrios uh, Keramidas and Professor Nikolos uh, uh, Dimitriadis. I was asked to coordinate uh, because of this extraordinary uh, event that has happened to uh, Professor Keramidas. Good night to everybody and see you on Friday. Good night, good night, good night. See you Friday. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Good night.